Good evening, and uh, we're, welcome to another uh, InSale coaching session. Um, tonight, uh, we are going to be talking about um, what? What is our uh, topic? Uh, uh, Crypto Kate. Uh, teamwork strategies for the team game, which starts uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow, I think. Yes, tomorrow. <laughs> So I'm definitely hyped for team game. I know that my individual performance was not exactly what I wanted. I didn't have the time to commit to it, but um, I always love the team game anyway. So, you know, I, I'm definitely looking forward to that. Uh, I'm looking forward to team because we are going to go head to head with all of our players. We've got our player ambassador board. And if you are able to beat our team, uh, you'll be getting a special digital certificate that says that you beat us. Awesome. <laughs> okay, and uh, we're joined uh, tonight also uh, by Stephen and um, I, by, uh, do we, we have a new name for you yet or not yet? For me? I don't think so. Yeah. Can everybody hear Gina? I feel like I can't, it might be me. No, I couldn't hear Gina. Mm -hmm. Gina, check that you have the correct uh, microphone enabled. But uh, I can translate. Gina says no. Uh, she has not selected a new team name. Uh, only a couple people submitted. So uh, we're still accepting people to uh, help name NCL Gina, give her a really cool hacker handle. Um, the winner will be selected by Gina herself. If she really likes the name that you guys pick and she wants to take it on as her identity, I will buy the person who recommends that name a game code. The way to submit your idea is to do it through Twitter. You can tag NCL Gina, you can tag Crypto Kate, and you can drag uh, tag NCL, and that's how you'll get it out there. Okay, and I am John Mako McGill, and uh, you know, just uh, uh, welcome to the show. Uh, we're uh, we got a couple things planned tonight. Um, this happens on the, uh, as, as it happens this. This uh, show is uh, on the anniversary of something very, very important to, I know, uh, uh, Crypto Kate, right? The release of Moana. Oh, well, <laughs> is it on the anniversary? It's on the three year, right? I don't know. I just know that uh, Gina and I, one of our teamwork strategies is that uh, we like to watch Moana while we compete in the team game. <laughs> So a big aloha <laughs> out there to anyone uh, uh, joining us from Hawaii. It might be a little bit early in their time zone, but um, I, I love Hawaii. I lived there for a couple of years and uh, definitely miss it. So, um, okay, great. So uh, without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this. Uh, uh, what is the best thing about the, the team environment, uh, do you think, uh, CryptoKate? Uh, for me, it's the fact that you get to collaborate with people who may have different skills than you. And I really see it as like a great learning opportunity. If you saw our post, uh, our video last week, I talked about how I like to organize teams. And for me, my objective is always learning. So I like to have some experienced players, some players who are just sort of getting in the groove and some new players all together on one team so they can work together. Yeah, that's great. Um, there's actually a few different strategies that we covered last week as, as far as like team composition. Uh, so if you missed that broadcast last week, uh, definitely go back and, you know, take another look at it. Um, you know, there's different ways that you can kind of uh, form a team. Um, Stephen, what's your favorite part of the team games? Well, uh, my part as a coach is to looking at the leadership that the students step forward and, uh, and take this leadership. Uh, I kind of look as a coach that uh, it's kind of like uh, professional coaches. Are they the ones that really win the games? No, it's there's always a team leader and somebody that's a role model for that team. And I have several students that step up, and and it's uh, exciting for me to see them uh, take the uh, the reins and go with it. I mean, we have uh, uh, one of our students right now. Uh, she's uh, she's motivated everybody in our school to uh, uh, to do better. We're going to actually put a club together. So uh, that's where team action really makes a difference. And, uh, and this relates back to uh, industry. Uh, if you're in a job, you're not going to work by yourself. You're going to work with a team. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, I really get excited just watching the students take control. And uh, they learn on their own. And they actually know more sometimes than the professors, <laughs> almost all the time. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, really interesting to see. Uh, I think uh, one of my favorite parts is seeing the growth, you know, that the students go through from year to year and uh, you know, from competition to competition. 
Um, Gina, are you uh, got your mic situation worked out? Do I? Can you tell? Is it better? I brought it closer. It's a. It's still a little quiet, but can you I, check I can... that you have the correct microphone enabled, like in your your setup? Um, it might be connected to the built-in microphone on your laptop right now. If not, uh, if you want to drop and join back in, that might help. Okay, so we'll, while we're waiting on Gina to come back, uh, you know, we'll uh, uh, kind of fill in. Uh, oh wait, she's back. No, it's, no still it's still the same. There's also a dial on the microphone that we got you. That's crazy. It doesn't have an effect, so I, I think she might have booped off completely. Okay. Um, I do yes. Okay, let me. Ooh. Hey, there we go. Calling. Let me. Yeah, the wrong one was selected. Let me just. Oh, perfect. <laughs> Great. Well, glad to have you I've back. I've done this enough times to know all the mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> so we have privacy yeah, pepper. The Her favorite yeah. part of team games is the snackies. The snacks. She nice. Snackies. <laughs> we tend to order food in. Um, so we'll order like breakfast sandwiches if we're getting up in the morning. We'll have pizza in the after in the evening or like sandwiches. Um, it just kind of depends. And when Zena goes to team, everybody feeds her little bits of their food. <laughs> so her favorite part of team is team snackies. And also when she comes to work. <laughs> I'm kind yeah. of terrible at giving her food. Gina will always Definitely feed Zena. Definitely her a bunch of chicken nuggets a few weeks ago. <laughs> you gave her like... <laughs> I gave her so many chicken nuggets. You gave her gas is what you gave her. But... I'm sorry. <laughs> um... All right, Gina, okay. one more favor. If you could just check and make sure that your camera is turned over to HD because you're looking a little grainy. Uh-oh. That's probably just my Wi-Fi. Okay, great. All right, so um, what is your favorite uh, part of the team game then? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so my favorite part is really just getting to work with everyone in, like, a way that you don't really get to, like, any other time in the season, like, learning from everybody. Sorry if I sound weird. I'm still getting over this cold. I forced her <laughs> to be here to corroborate my Moana methodologies. Oh, story. Um, yeah, just getting to really, like, learn from everybody. I know I've learned more in team games than, like, anything on my own, so. Great, definitely, yeah, so, um. Definitely yeah, learning I, aspect of it. You know, I, I agree with that. You do learn a lot on team mm -hmm. games. Um, I think part of that is that you're able to take on challenges that are bigger than you, knowing that you have that support system and knowing that people, you know, are around to kind of help you out with that, um, you know, if you're missing a skill, you, you're still willing to give it a shot, right? Um, uh, a lot of the encouragement comes from your team. And, you know, um, I know that for me, I, I was the time gatekeeper for one of our competitions. And I made sure that every 40 minutes or so, everyone kind of, you know, took a break, you know, just a five minute water, you know, just kind of a, a clear your head kind of break. Uh, timekeeping, I think, is one of the really, really, really critical skills to, to um, running an effective team. Um, now we, we've had teams that are sitting in the same room, uh, and teams that are kind of geographically dispersed. Um, what's your favorite, uh, format? We'll go to Gina again. Okay. So I've definitely, I've done both with like a Google spreadsheet. You know, that's something we said we're going to talk about. So we always use a Google spreadsheet before we submit any answers, we get everything in a sheet, challenge by challenge, or category by category, and then all the challenges, all the questions, make sure at least, usually we do at least two people. If it's something really hard, we say like three, if that many people know how to do it. Um, definitely get a, at least two doing each challenge, so you're cross-checking, um, and then if you're separated, I know what my team and I did last season, last spring, I think, and maybe in the fall, we had a Discord chat because we didn't really, it was all like, I was the only one on campus. The rest of the team was commuter students. It was just like the easiest method for us. So we created a Discord chat and just worked like that. And then we were able to get on voice so we didn't have to keep typing and, you know, taking time away from actually trying to solve the challenges with type. So that was my 
actually probably one of my favorite parts of doing team last season was getting on Discord and like actually being able to talk to everybody while we did the challenges. Talking so, to the problems we were having. So I heard you mention Google Sheets. Um, I know you're a little bit broken there, so I'm just kind of you know going back over this for anybody that didn't catch it. Uh, and Discord as like a voice chat. Um, so uh, there's a couple questions coming in. I'm going to go ahead and mark those. If uh, you have those questions, um, you can actually click on the uh, ask a question button, and it will um, uh, kind of tag those for me. Um, but if well, not, then you know, just put them in the chat, and I'll go ahead and grab them. That's fine, too. While John is talking about the features of Crowdcast, we have a very special feature that we're going to use tonight. The uh, player master team has not picked our team name. We had so many great suggestions that we picked our favorites. And John is going to post a poll so that everyone can vote on our team name. And then the winner from this poll will actually be our team name that we will use in the game this season. So John, whenever you get a chance to post that poll, I'm okay. really excited about it. Um, some of you are precious and adorable, and it was really hard to pick. So we got, you know, the the names that we can. And we will be uh, getting some kind of cool prize for whoever's team name we select. I don't know what that prize is yet, but some kind of cool prize. Awesome. Um, Steven, I got a question for you while we got you on. Um, sure. How do you keep morale up during the games? Or have you ever seen like frustration kind of take over or any kind of uh, team conflict? Well, since all of our students are online, we have, and they're in different parts of the country, it can be sometimes a, uh, a challenge and, and they can get low morale or they feel like in some cases someone's isolated and they're not being heard. We use Slack as our uh, communication tool. We're actually going to be looking at MS Team in the future. I don't know if you're familiar with MS Team, but it's a new. It's going to replace Google. I mean, uh, Skype, not Google, Skype. And so, uh, uh, but uh, the morale. Uh, I think uh, mainly I, I count on the students to. Uh, that team leader is the one that cut that helps the morale, as I mentioned before. Uh, so we always have someone step up and keep keep the whole team running, and it may not be a team leader. It's just someone on the team that has uh, uh, has the ability to <laughs> to uh, uh, get everyone motivated. Zena apparently has two cents to add. Uh, I don't have a translation for that. <laughs> I'll have to she's, bring. She's our strategy for morale on our team. <laughs> I'll have to bring bring, bring uh, big techs in here. That's our big, uh, uh, grand, he's a grand Pyrenees. <laughs> oh yeah. He's over a um, hundred pounds. <laughs> how about uh, you, Kate? Do you have any uh, tips on uh, resolving conflict or keeping morale up during the games? Um, no, I guess I'm. I, would, <laughs> yeah, I guess I'm a bad leader in that sense because I'm just like everybody get focused. I can be a little bit uh, obsessive, so uh, I usually try to make sure that I have someone on my team who is a little bit um, better at that kind of thing than me. Okay, hey, Gina. Is Gina back on? She's oh, not, oh, but that's who I use. <laughs> um, bless Gina. She usually, uh, anywhere where I'm hyper-focused and I can't, like, accomplish something because I'm so focused on, like, some, I don't know, I get weird and obsessive. Um, Gina's, like, my, my rock star, and she'll, like, she communicates with the player ambassador team for me when I'm so focused on the idea that I can't communicate the idea. Uh, she'll reach out to you guys. So I think that will probably happen during team as well, as you will see. I'll have this like thing in my head and I'll be too excited to get it typed out. And Gina's really good at that. She's back on. She could probably say more about this than I can. I'm not the morale person. I'm the, the I will cheer everyone on, but I'm also the hyper-focused like project manager whip cracker. <laughs> um, I think I'm trying to be like, nope. Oh. I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> in the sense of, like, I can roll with, I'm very much like the, you guys got this, you can do it. If you can't, move on, try again. Like, I try not to be too, too like, me. crack the whip <laughs> in that sense. Like, <clears throat> sorry. Um, I definitely encourage, like, taking a step back if you're struggling, but also, like, working together and, like, 
get it if you can't. I try to make sure that like no one's getting too hyper focused when I am leading a team because it can be very. So she tries to correct mm, me. Very easily. <laughs> Okay, great. Um, so we do have a comment in our uh, uh, section uh, from our very own InSale Web Witch. And uh, she says, if you do in-person meetups, I always suggest getting some snacks while you work together to keep yourself fueled. Um, any comments on that, player ambassadors? Agreed. <laughs> yeah, we try to, I love to get people together on Saturday morning and order breakfast sandwiches. Um, both, um, when we every time we were together as a team at Pace, uh, Pace would get us food, which was really nice. Um, so, God yeah, bless Jill. shout out to Jill. Jill she's is like, best. she's in charge of all things food. Like, she's she's the she's in charge. She's like the events manager for the computer. I think Tina said events Pace. manager, and but it cracked up. Um, but she's yes. like a snack mom. Like, I know that she's sounds weird, but like if you're having. Yeah. yeah, if you're it's having a really bad day, day like, and like you shoots. come to class or whatever, and you're trying to coach, but like you skip food and you're like starving, but you're trying to run a practice, she'll like give you like a bag of like a little snack thing that, and like life saving, and you don't Always realize how much food affects you until you're like hangry and about to like scream at someone. Yeah, and uh, that works both ways too, right? So. If you eat a lot of junk food, it can also have kind of a uh, an effect on you as well. And uh, Webwitch, uh, uh, Insia Webwitch, uh, she she also adds the get some healthy snacks too, right? Not just Doritos. Um, I know that I have seen a difference before when I'm drinking like tons of diet <laughs> sodas and mistake. eating tons of you know uh, potato chips and everything. <laughs> it actually doesn't work with my brain that well. It kind of slows me down a little bit. So you know, healthy snacks, I, I definitely would recommend that. You know, and uh, keep in mind, you know, that if you do bring snacks, bring enough for everybody, but also kind of make them a little bit. Uh, you know, friendly for everybody's uh, particular palate. So um, don't bring just flaming hot, yeah, just flaming <laughs> hot Doritos, you know. <laughs> if you're over 21, a bottle of wine goes a long way. <laughs> if you're me, it makes you sleepy. So be careful with that too. <laughs> And that kind of uh, goes to what uh, Paul is saying in the comment section as well, which is, you know, people are going to get frustrated. They're going to get stuck. And, you know, sometimes just that little 20 minute power nap or, you know, just call it a night, you know, um, when you know, know your limits. Right. Um, you're in a team game now, which means that, you know, uh, you don't have to do it, everything by yourself. And when you need a break, you can tell your team that and be able to, you know, kind of walk away a little bit. So um, take advantage of the fact that, you know, you're not just doing everything by yourself. Um, I would, I could, uh, I, yeah, go ahead. One of the things that our team does is they break up into shifts. So, uh, and we have a lot of help desk students that work for uh, Hewlett Packard and, in the help desk. And they're used to working shift work. So they usually take like a midnight shift or a swing shift. So that way we're working this all 24 hours, uh, you know, all the way through the, the competition. I don't know if the rest of you all do that or not, but it's a good <laughs> way to do it. We're all like, it's 3 a.m., I'm going to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that poll is live for anyone that wants to join in on that. Uh, chime in on what you think our uh, uh, player ambassador name should be. Um, uh, team, we team were tied be. for like a hot second, and then somebody voted for Stego Your Egos. So if you don't love the name Stego Your Egos, you should vote. And if you want to keep Stego Your Egos in the lead, got to vote too. I'm a little sad because no one's voting for our two favorite ones. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. There was, we actually did combine, uh, we actually kind of like, we kind of liked CryptoKate and the cyber, the cypher consulate. Like that was kind of cool. I like added it. I don't know if it made it on the poll. Um, Gina, what was your favorite? My favorite was- That was also Diplomat. cool. John, what about you? Um, I'm a big Stego Eurigos fan, you know. Um, I'm all about that. That's a you know very clever name, and it has a little bit of that. Uh, I, you know, who um, hates Stego? Me and Kate. What, what, what's the name of that? Um, the uh, uh, the Netflix special, you know, where the girl eats the Eggos, you know. <laughs> so you know, it has a little bit of that, that Stranger <laughs> uh, Things feel to it, right? So I kind of like that. Um, what do you think, Stephen? What's your favorite? Uh, can you see the poll? Yes. Uh, what's your favorite? I Cypher this said that. <laughs> that was good too. So, All right, it, so we got a, a very good 
difference, you know, of opinion here. Yeah. We really need people <laughs> to hit that poll for us to to kind of uh, force us into a single decision because we're never going to figure this out on our we're own. We're never going to agree. <laughs> and as Liam will most likely suggest, if he's on the show, he will try to convince you all to divide your votes so that it's a four-way, five-way tie. So Liam called you out already. You can't do it. Okay. Um, we have a couple questions I'd like to get to real quick. Um, and we're going to start with uh, one from uh, Rob. Uh, actually, it looks like maybe Rob answered. I'm not it's sure how mine. this works yet. Okay. It's your, your, your uh, crypto case question. So um, we are going to mark that as start answering. There we go. Uh, how do you collaborate with your teammates? And we'll just kind of go around, uh, start with uh, crypto Kate. That's her, her question. So we'll uh, start with her. I mostly asked my own question so that I could direct your attention uh, to my blog. I don't think the link for Check Out Kate's blog has been updated for this week, but uh, I just posted in the comments for um, the blog I wrote on team working strategies. And I wanted mostly for you guys to be able to see the picture that uh, we can't share right now without people getting bumped off the show. Um, but I always create a spreadsheet and I have an example tab that I always leave open with instructions. Um, so. I'll put the challenge name, uh, the difficulty, the amount of points that it's worth, the question, and then uh, a column for correct answers, and then a column for each person on your team. And then what will happen is like, once you get a correct answer, I highlight it in green once it's been submitted and we know it's correct. If for any reason we submit an answer and we find out later that that's not the correct answer when we try to submit it, we will highlight it in red just so we can track those wrong answers within the spreadsheet. Um, there's a tab, there's a sheet for each um, category, just so it's easy to find things. And um, I think there's like some directions right there on it. So uh, that's, that's how I've always worked with my teams. Gina and I have done this before. It's really great because you can see who's contributed where um, so that during your post game follow up, you can kind of see like who worked on what challenges by who put in answers. Um, it is a group piece, so just be careful that you don't edit someone else's column. Um, I've seen other teams color code the columns so they don't mess it up. So like I might be pink and John might be blue and Gina might be green and Webwitch might be red, like just so that everybody like stays in their lane, um, not to be weird about it. But uh, I found it really helpful um, to do it that way. And then you're, it's easy to see how many people agree on the answer. And especially if you get different answers. Um, some people will question themselves and be like, oh, I got a different answer than this person. They're probably right. If you come up with a different answer, you really should put it in so that, you know, everybody can get together and try to evaluate which is, you know, which is more likely to be correct so that everyone, you know, agrees. And then we actually only let the team captain uh, input answers until Sunday. So Sunday, usually between like noon and 4 p.m., depending on our cadence we'll declare a free for all because we want to get any flags that we can. So basically at that point, if you have, you know, good faith that you're submitting a correct answer, um, you can go for it. Usually we want you to try to collaborate with someone, but we've noticed that sort of towards the end, people tend to drop off as they feel like they have no more to contribute. So the people who are a little more serious and a little more willing to work through it might end up working solo. And we let the team captain make that call of when you can just start submitting your own answers. Um, but a team captain is a person who is detail oriented and good at putting the correct answer in the correct box. So like, I don't make a great team captain here because I kill my accuracy because I can't tell which box is like in a straight line from the other. I constantly like get in the wrong rows. So I'm a terrible candidate for this. So, um, you know, don't be afraid to say like, I'm not good at this and let somebody else uh, take over to submit. Even if you are the team captain and you think this is not your skill, find someone who is detail oriented to submit those answers because some of the top teams, it will be decided by accuracy, especially if people complete like 100%. Those people who all get 100%, it's going to come down to accuracy. Great. Thank you. And uh, Rob also would like to add there that we use Slack easy to send collaborating files and also be able to watch the NCL Slack. Um, there is going to be some uh, chatter in NCL Slack. I definitely recommend that, you know, people have that available as a, uh, you know, a, a standby resource. Um, okay, I think so I'm gonna... you and I have competed in a different CTF and we just had like direct messages on the, the Cyber Skyline Slack. That was how we chatted. 
Yeah, absolutely. And we've also um, used uh, Google Sheets before. Um, and in the highlighting that you're talking about, I, um, we've done a couple different methods, but yeah, uh, I definitely think that coordination is key. All right, um, for the next part, uh, we've got a, a question uh, from Emily, which is, does anyone not have a team? And I'm gonna go, uh, go ahead and uh, have um, uh, CryptoKate kind of talk a little bit about, uh, not, not just to focus on CryptoKate all the time, but um, she and I kind of uh, at one point um, put together this looking for team or looking for group kind of uh, um, resource. So um, if you could kind of speak to that a little bit, uh, Kate. Well, you grab the link. Oh, uh, which link yeah. is that? Uh, the Cyber Silence Slack. Just find the link to the Slack for everybody. If you're not oh, already yeah, sure, in the sure, Slack, sure. Uh, John's going to find the link. So John came to me a couple seasons ago and said, I don't have a team. What can I do? And I was like, well, let's make a thing. And we had people post and ask Kate, but it got a little crowded and it was hard to keep track. So eventually Cyber Skyline was like, why don't we make this its own channel? And now there's a whole channel. It's uh, NCL searching for teams. And you can go in and you can post, you know, I did this well in individual in preseason. I was in this bracket. I'm looking for people, you know, I'm really good at this. I'm looking for people who are really good at that, or I'd like to learn this or that. Um, and it helps people who don't have teams find teams. A lot of people will like grab everybody together and make big teams. Sometimes you end up with just like one or two other players. But the good news is if you do not have a team, you can compete as an individual in team. There is no minimum team size. Okay, um, Stephen, do you have anything out of that? No, I think that's she hit it all. Uh, that's, all right. Uh, I know I've you been doing this for a had, minute. Uh, <laughs> I, I know that you mentioned that you'd worked with geographically kind of dispersed teams. Um, how do you arrange like how to put that team together? Um, I know in my case, uh, you know, we were putting together teams from or a team from uh, several different colleges. So, um, any idea on that? Sure. Well, we're all in the same uh, college. Uh, so uh, I kind of help. Uh, we don't want to put all the all the newbies on one uh, team by themselves. So we try to disperse it with different levels, silvers and bronze and gold. Uh, we also uh, we do have a group that uh, they've kind of formed their own team all along. They've been doing this for a couple sessions. So uh, I let them continue on and uh, they have a goal where they want to be like number one. Uh, so, uh, uh, I also look at, uh, when I'm selecting the teams, uh, we, uh, also have dual credit. So we do have some high school students that are on the, uh, college team, uh, except for our Mescalera Apache, uh, high school. They're all on the same team at the high school there, but, uh, they actually do meet together at the high school, uh, and they are competing as one team at one location. And uh, actually, that's an opportunity for students because some of my students come in before the teams start and help uh, organize the teams at the high school. And it gives them some uh, they, an opportunity to teach the students. But as they teach the students, they're learning themselves. OK, great. Thank you. Um, OK, um, the next question I have uh, is coming from uh, Mickey um, Valila. I hope I'm not butchering your name too badly. Um, but yeah, I, the question is, if you're not part of a team yet, can you play as an individual? And um, uh, I guess we lost Gina. I was going to field that one with her. Uh, but if you want to go ahead and uh, field that one again, Kate, then be much appreciative. <laughs> yeah, so there's no minimum team size. You can compete as an individual in the team game. Uh, we do encourage you to try to find a team, even if it's with people that you don't know so well. It's a lot of fun. It gives you an opportunity to have somebody to complain to. I mean, we have so many people who want to talk during individual uh, season. It's so much better when you do have people to talk to. Um, so yeah, absolutely. You can compete as an individual, but uh, the NCL channel um enemy gates down actually pointed to the exact channel i don't know how to do that except just the regular cyber skyline dot slack link so cool enemy gate down thank you um if you go to that link you should be able to just post like who you are what you're looking for and you know what you want to learn great thank you um okay uh let's see Next one, um, we're gonna go for... There's another shark over there asking a question for you there, Mako. 
Oh yeah, yeah. There we go. Uh, Dark Shark. Nice. Um, let's see. Uh, all right. So this question will go to Stephen for um, uh, Stephen. Are the challenges harder in the team game versus the individual game? Or are the difficulty levels mostly the same? I would say they're the same. Uh, don't you think so, Kate? Oh. <laughs> I was trying to get more water and not be super rude. <laughs> so I like muted my mic and I was like, wait, crap. <laughs> so, I caught her. <laughs> he knew. <laughs> um, there, some of the challenges uh, are a little bit more time intensive. Um, they're oh, like a tiny bit harder, but realistically, like if you were successful in the individual, you're going to be successful in team. The, the baseline is still the same. Just those like final, like last, like 10 to 15 challenge, like questions, not even full challenges, 10 to 15 questions that like drive everybody crazy. Um, those might be just like a half a step harder in team. And that's really all the change between the two that I've ever noticed. Right. But okay, since I already um, did it, you know, darling, can I have more drink? <laughs> All right, great. Um, so we got four questions answered so far. Uh, let's go to that poll and see how we're doing on that. Um, looks like Stegoar Egos is out front pretty far. Um, I don't uh, know. Seven I votes. only see like 15 votes, and I'm pretty sure we have more people than that. So we need your votes, fam. Stegoar Egos is not so far away that another uh, can't pull ahead. So make sure you guys cast your votes. It's really important. We want to do something you love. <laughs> All right, great. So um, let's see. I uh, got kind of quiet in the chat section over here. Um, Everybody's see. tired. They need yeah, a nap that, that to might prep be the for case. team. Yeah, uh, definitely. I will say that in the blog that we wrote, I put four strategies, and we haven't mentioned one of the strategies. And I forgot okay. that I wrote this because uh, this blog is a little bit older. Um, the first strategy that I wrote, I called Leroy Jenkins. And that's a free for all where everybody goes in and they just do their thing. Um, it does have some downsides, but you know. Um, Namely hits to accuracy and- uh, Yeah, and know, sometimes you could use wasting all time. the attempts. Yeah, for me, for me, it was wasting time because uh, I put so much effort into working on this steganography challenge and someone had already solved it when I got done and that was just so frustrating. Um, and then I had classroom collaboration. And for me, like, that's my favorite because we would all get together. And I mean, we would always watch some form of movie, but like the most iconic movie that we have like repeated many times was Moana. <laughs> because uh, our team was, I think, I'm pretty sure our team was mostly females. Uh, I know that Gina and I were in charge. So that's probably why. <laughs> um, then I had, of course, online communication only. And then lastly is any any combination of the above. And like I said, I would use the classroom setting. We would keep our answers stored online. If somebody couldn't attend, they would collaborate with us online. And then at the end, like in those last few hours, we would Leroy Jenkins to the finish line. Um, and it definitely helped us jump like, you know, at least like five to 10, if not like 20 to 30 more flags when we hit Leroy Jenkins territory. So while it's not the best strategy out the gate, it has its benefits in those last few hours. That also, reminds me of one of my favorite strategies and it's a very controversial one. Um, and I call it flag hoarding. How do, how, how do we feel uh, about flag hoarding? Uh, John, I'm sure adores it because it fits your play style and personality. <laughs> I don't believe in flag hoarding. Because, uh, one, it's really frustrating when people who know that they're going to most likely be in the top several um, don't submit until near the very end and you drop like 10 to 15 places all at once. And if you're or like... drop off the leaderboard completely. Which yeah, if you're at like so 101 <laughs> or 102 and you're trying so hard to break into them and all of a sudden you're 100 and like 20... It's so demoralizing. So as a player, I hate the concept of, of flag hoarding, but it is a strategy that exists. So John, you can definitely speak to it. We, we, we share our information, even though as player ambassador, I dislike this because it's, it's, it's not really, it doesn't add anything except show off that you're a little bit of a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now it's my chance to defend the practice, right? <laughs> um, so 
I, I, I admit that my first couple of seasons, I fell victim to flag hoarding. I was on the top board and fell completely off the board. And what it did and for me stinks, was it pushed right? me so hard to like, um, I'm very competitive by nature. So when I, when I saw people just all of a sudden coming in, it pushed me to really just pour on that steam in the end. And I was already kind of lagging in motivation and energy and it just took me right across that finish line. So, you know, um, the other thing about flag hoarding is that I think you get a lot higher accuracy because you have a lot of time to look at that flag before you actually submit it. So I'm not saying to flag hoard, but it is a valid strategy. I will say, especially in areas where it's not as black and white, if you're correct, like network traffic or log analysis, um, you don't always have a chance to go back and correct yourself with enough time if you flag hoard. So, you know, if you're going to flag hoard, you better be you better be Dang right. <laughs> sure that you are right. Yeah, I almost swore again. Um, I'm going to need some like soap or something. But uh, yeah, if, if you're going to be that jerk, you better be dang sure you're right. Otherwise, you're just going to make a, a donkey out of yourself. All right, great. Um, what about what see. about the survey? Which there? Oh yeah, <gasps> people forget oh. there are free points in the game. All right. you have to do is answer our survey, <laughs> and people forget. Especially the flag hoarders, they're the worst ones to forget. But like, people will people will go through the games, and then like right after it closes, we'll get this flood of messages. I forgot to answer the survey. <laughs> it's like a hundred right. points. Like it's not a small amount of points. Like. Don't do it first because we want you to no. experience the game right. and give us really honest feedback. But by like end of day, Saturday night. You probably should be thinking about it. Right? That's right. <laughs> awesome. Um, so uh, we're still kind of a little bit uh, light in the comments section. So um, I know we have a couple of competitions going on right now. Do um, you want to kind of uh, tell people what they can win or what, what you're willing to do for them here? Yeah, so um, for the NCL player ambassador name, we did that. Uh, we're still voting in the comments, and Crypto Kate the Cyphers is still in the running, uh, which I just think is super cute because I'm obsessed with crypto, so I will never be mad at a, a good crypto pun. Um, and Stego Your Egos is in the lead, so uh, make sure you guys get in your votes. We are basing this decision 100% on your votes. Uh, we did pick our favorite. These five are our favorites. So you are helping us pick between our favorites. Uh, we could not agree as a team, so you guys get to. And then uh, I'll be sending out some kind of cool prize that I haven't really determined yet to whoever sent us this suggestion um, of the winning team name. So that'll be a lot of fun. We have a competition out for Paul and for Gina to get really cool hacker handles. Um, Basically, it's one of those things where you can submit it to CryptoKate uh, and NCL. Uh, Gina has a Twitter, so you can submit hers to NCL Gina. And then when they see a name that they connect with and they decide that it's theirs and they tell us that this is my new handle, um, I will buy a game code for the person who recommended uh, those handles. I think having your sort of like, you know, hacker handle and superhero identity is an important step as a player ambassador so um uh, i know when i finally I got, got mine i was so a, excited yeah i got super distracted <laughs> by a comment uh chad is the best they said <laughs> did you say donkey or ghost in the machine <laughs> and you guys will hear us make fun of uh <laughs> ghost in the machine or liam a lot gina in the comments makes uh well Gina with a G in the comments makes fun of Liam a lot. They go to school together. Uh, I've, I've talked to them a lot. They're, they're, they've been around for a bit and we poke at them with good fun, but full of love. Uh, Ghost in the Machine has sent back a devil emoji. So he's definitely <laughs> in the game and uh, knows we made fun of him. So um, don't think that we're just like calling out random players and making fun of them. <laughs> we make fun of them because we know them. Um, Oh, so Gina says for reference, uh, her favorite name so far was uh, Gina Bite. So if you've got a suggestion, you have to beat that one. Um, there's also, do we have any other competitions? Did I not, did I forget something, John? Um, yeah. Uh, what happens if they beat us? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, if you're able to beat the NCL player ambassador team, 
uh, we will be sending out digital certificates to uh, the um, coaches. We'll try to send it out to the players as well. Um, we're basically like, we're going to give you like an award for actually beating us, but no, we have like a team to beat this time because um, I mean, we have such a wide variety of skills on our team, which I think is so much fun and wonderful. Um, we, we have people who specialize in different areas and now we have Paul who has consistently ranked in like the top 10 for like ever. <laughs> Um, as long as I've been playing the game, Paul has been a top player. So uh, anywhere where we're we're lacking and slacking, Paul's going to be there to uh, to wipe the board. So uh, I'm sure people will beat us. I don't think Paul always comes in first. So there's definitely opportunity to take us out, but it's going to be a challenge, and we're going to make you work for it. Um, for everybody who beat me. Um, I think I was the top scoring player ambassador for individual games. So if you beat me in the individual game, we'll be sending out stickers. Uh, I might be sending out a couple of extra stickers to people who were super active in the Slack channel where I will hand, uh, I will carve uh, almost onto the sticker that says I captured more flags than the NCL player ambassadors. I will sign the back of every certificate and include a handwritten note with all the prizes that come out for beating the player ambassadors. Uh, so you know, save my hand. So um, we also had another comment uh, from NCL Web, which uh, that all of those can be found on Kate's blog. And I did update the link at the bottom. So if you click that button to check out Kate's blog, you'll be able to see that um, uh, blog for this week or be able to go to prior weeks and, uh, you know, go through some of the, the last minute tips. Um, also, if you go to the top uh, where it says 2019 Fall Live, there's a schedule and it says session 13 of 14 which means last week is our last week of this season for the Crowdcast. Um, but you can click that and you'll be able to select the first 12 sessions, which all have content on different subject areas. Um, the only ones not included, I think, were, did we do open source on this channel? And building VMs, did we do those on here? We did VMs, I know. Um, we did VMs open on here? Source? I think we did an open source, didn't we? Oh, we did open source. So building VMs is still on our Facebook channel that uh, was recorded live there. Oh, right, right. Um, right. But you, you can find it on the Facebook channel. There are some previous videos on different content on the Facebook channel. There's always stuff coming out on Twitter. If you follow us on Twitter, you're going to find out stuff because we don't shut up. So there's that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, let's see. Uh, the last thing I would like to cover is uh, what is considered cheating in the team game? Uh, so, we'll start with Steven. We'll start with Steven this time. Trying to ask the coach to help you. Okay, okay. That's so a, That's a big no-no. That one's definitely <laughs> out of bounds, right? Yes. What, what else is out of bounds? Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. – uh, Team is collaborative and we encourage you to collaborate. You cannot post on social media. You cannot post on uh, open forums. You cannot post in the Slack channel. You cannot talk to other teams. You can only talk to the people who are registered under your name. Uh, you can see your little team name. There should be no more than seven people on a team. If you are on different teams and you are caught flag sharing, you will be disqualified and relegated to pewter, which means you are unranked and do not receive a scouting report and are ineligible for all prizes. What happens if they're at the same college, though? Is that, uh, is that okay or is... So just because you go to school together does not mean you are on the same team. And even if you have the same coach, you are not on the same team unless you are registered for the same team. So while it stinks, what's great is you can have some friendly competition and smack talk, uh, but no collaboration on methodologies, tools, or answers. So a lot of people um, actually get very confused on what is considered appropriate dialogue for like trash talking and stuff. Um, if you name a tool, you're not supposed to do that. You're not supposed to name a tool. I actually got caught this year. I dropped Nmap by accident during the games. And like Franz and Toby were like, you've been around <laughs> long enough. What you doing? Uh, I was like, oh, yeah, my bad. Uh, so you can't talk about specific tools. You can't talk about how to solve the challenge. So like, um, John, I think you and I have done this before. I've been like, John, have you gotten the answer for, you know, the file type of the file that's hidden in the Wireshark? And you'd be like, yeah, 
and I'd be like, oh, crap. And like, well, the first thing you'd do is you'd have me prove it because yeah. So you know, I'd be like, like, wait, screen cap. They're social engineering, right? So you yeah. know, you'd always make me prove that if I said I had the answer, I actually had the answer. That way, you, I couldn't kind of fish for some information from you. So, so I would make him yeah. screen cap that he had it like checked off, and it was a green box with his like display name in the thing. Um, and I'd be like, Just did make you sure get this? No collaboration whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah, I'd be like, did you get this? And then um, because he had gotten it, I'd be like, all right, I've done this, I've done this, I've done this. And he'd be like, yeah, what's next? And I'd be like, oh, I hate you. <laughs> so like, we would never give each other any information, um, but because um, because a lot of people like have found ways around like the small things that we used to do, it's really just best not to talk to anyone. Like, If you're not sure, just don't talk about it. But, but you can't talk about how to solve the challenge. Like if John had even said, you're so close, like he couldn't even tell me that right. I was close. He had to just be like, yeah, what's next? But hinting <laughs> um, can be so fun, right? I mean, because uh, I, she solved one challenge one time and I like, I was just so close and she could see that I was close. I was like, but, I'm going to die you know, laughing. Like, you're going <laughs> to hate it. You're going to hate everything when you get out of this. Um, so you can be friendly, you can still talk, you know, but um, just don't share any methods or any, uh, you know, solving techniques or tools or, you know, anything like that. If you're a, if you're a Weasis SoCal member, they have a Slack channel and they have an NCL channel in the Slack and I'm in there. And um, there was like a really great dialogue at one point. I was like, how's everyone holding up? And then a couple people answers, oh, this specific challenge is kicking my butt or, oh, I really liked this challenge. And just sort of talking about like how they like made you feel like that's fine because that's nothing technical and provides no hints. Um, so that's sort of the best dialogues that you can have with other players is sort of share your frustrations. You know, you can be frustrated together. You can have a laugh together. Um, a lot of times players will be like, Oh my gosh, I laughed so hard when I got to that meme behind flag number two in right. the scanning challenge, you know? And that doesn't tell you anything other than there's a meme, which if you've played the games, you know there's going to be a meme <laughs> because Franz and Toby create the games. Right. So it tells you that there's going to be a meme, but that doesn't help you answer the question because it's still going to be in flag format. Um, that tells you that there's a flag two, which the question is literally find my flags flag one, flag two, flag three, flag four, flag five. So, you know, that doesn't tell you anything that's not in the games. And then of course, naming the category or the challenge name. Um, yeah, so like that kind of thing is the dialogue that you can have. And we highly encourage that because we do believe that NCL is, is a community. But what you can't do is anything that would in any capacity help someone get to the answer. So you can't like, you know, you can't, if they're doing cryptography and they're looking at something that's in binary, you can't be like, oh, what do you know that uses ones and zeros? Because even though that's not a hint, like it changes the way that they're thinking about the problem. And if it helps them problem solve, then you're helping them. And anything that's helpful is cheating. So I think it's really black and white. Ultimately, if you're not sure, just don't talk to anyone. It's the easiest method to you know, if you don't cheat, you won't get caught. So you don't have to worry about getting disqualified if you don't cheat. It's a really simple methodology. Um, and the biggest thing is coaches cannot participate with their students in any capacity at any point during the games. If there's an active competition, coaches are not allowed to help their students. Okay, um, I do have a question come in. Um, and it's going to be a kind of one off here. Uh, can someone write something on what are the best tools for scanning log analysis or any of the challenges? Um, I'm going to just answer that really quickly. Um, you know, basically, uh, we've written blogs on this. We've written, you know, we've had Crowdcast uh, sessions before. The best resource, honestly, is to go back to those sessions. Uh, we named several different scanning tools and, uh, you know, how to do log analysis. There are individual blogs and individual Crowdcasts on those. So I definitely invite you to go back through the history of uh, this channel and um, uh, uh, go through the blogs and kind of uh, uh, look for specific topics like that. Uh, Rob added in the comments that coaches can bring us food. Yes, coaches can help yeah. by feeding their students if they are gathering in person. Um, another thing that coaches, um, that teams have struggled with in the past is um, if they have multiple teams at the same school, getting them separate classrooms. That's a big way coaches can help because if um, 
you know, one team cheats off of the other team, it could actually get both teams in trouble. So giving them separate spaces spaces is a huge thing that coaches can do. Yeah, food well, is an exempt tool, as Paul says. Food is allowed. Food is the only tool you can share. If there's specific foods that, you know, give you brain power, <laughs> you know, talk about food. Well, we've covered a lot of material tonight. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Stephen and uh, thank uh, Crypto for uh, Crypto Kate for joining us tonight, um, yeah, as well as Gina, you know, uh, intermittently at least. Uh, and um, we do have that poll that I want to go ahead and close out because I'm really anxious to get our new team name. Um, and I don't think it's going to change anytime soon, but do you want to leave it open? Uh, we can leave it open for like 30 more seconds while we wrap up. And the okay. moment the video ends, whoever's in the lead, that's our team name. Though I think it's going to be Stego or Egos. Okay, so 30 seconds, get those uh, get those votes in on your poll. And uh, uh, while we're doing that, um, let's see, uh, any last minute tips, I guess. Steven? Just have fun. Yes. I like that. Yeah, absolutely. Team is like a bunch of fun. I don't even see team as like a big competition. I see it as a big party to hang out with your friends who are also doing the same thing. Is Liam voting back and forth between two to be a troll? <laughs> I feel like it's Liam. <laughs> okay, uh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do it. We're gonna pull the trigger here. It looks like it's gonna be Stig or Egos. So even with um, Liam being a troll and voting back and forth. Watch. Oh, it, it is still fluctuating a little bit. I don't think it's going to make up three, though. I don't so, know. Okay. It's moving a lot. Oh, it's so stressful. You guys are giving me. I'm gonna pass. <laughs> oh, oh, wait, wait. Here it comes. Here it comes. <laughs> all right. You are uh, all trolls. Nine to 11. Oh, man. This is really, really close. Oh, God. Right. Why is it may end so up being Crypto Kate and the Egos. I don't know. <laughs> They're, they're such brats. <laughs> oh, Children. Okay, ready? We're going to count this down in five, four, three, two, Happy five, one. Oh, oh, no! it's tied. Oh, wait, it's oh, tied. it's one, one. I don't know. It was tied. <laughs> We're going to have to go to like the, the, the instant replay and slow it down and see where it was. But I, I don't know. I think maybe I think Crypto Kate and Cypher is one. I don't know. It's so close. <laughs> Ego Kate. <laughs> Ego Kate. There you go. <laughs> Lego my bowl. That's what it's going to be. You know what's going to happen? We're going to let it. We're going to let it be. And then I'm going to check it at some point tonight, wherever it is. I'm sure it will move much less when you trolls are no longer with us on the studio. <laughs> <laughs> All right, great. So we I'd like to go ahead like, and close, close it. it out. We have to close the video to close yeah. the poll. Like to close it out. Thank you all for attending. Um, uh, They're thank literally you to leaving it tied on purpose. You know, uh, Stephen, I definitely appreciate you know yeah. um, you uh, uh, helping us out. And you know, uh, we do still have a um, a couple things uh, open. Like uh, you know, Kate mentioned some of the uh, uh, competitions and. You know, you're always welcome to apply to be a player ambassador as well. We um, are so looking for more player ambassadors. You just go to CryptoKate.com, go to the NCL player ambassador tab. Right now, all that's up there is a link to our application. Uh, it is a little extensive because we do want to pick the best people who can come on and do these shows. I don't know what that was. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think like, that's our cue that it's time. I hiccup so. It was weird. Um, <laughs> So yes, fill it out. Give it a lot of, you know, you don't have to give it too much thought. Just fill it out very authentically. Show us who you are. Um, John Webwitch and Gina are all looking at applications and are hoping to select anywhere from three to five new people to work with each of them. So that means we have nine to 15 slots. Uh, and we're hoping to announce all of those new people at the turn of the new year. Awesome. Right. Okay, so uh, stay tuned. We got one more of these uh, um Sessions uh, scheduled. Coming It'll be the out post with us next week. We might yeah, give we out some just, ridiculous awards. Ju just one last uh, of these crowdcasts for this this season, and then uh, we go into our next season block. And we're already planning big things for that. Um, it's going to just get bigger, and you know uh, we're going to be able to provide uh, a lot more content and a lot more help for the players. So definitely looking forward to that. And um, yeah, we'll see you next week, and see you in the games.
Okay. They're going to leave it tied. <laughs> All right. 